Um, okay, so welcome to the set theory seminar. Um, today, it's a great pleasure to introduce Matteo Viale from the University of Torino. And he's going to speak on absolute model companionship, forcibility, and the continuum problem. Okay, thank you so much for the invitation. I really appreciate it. One time I would like to come in person, but who knows when. That would be great. Yeah, so yeah. I, uh, um, this this uh, has a lot of material I want to present, and it's divided in two parts. One part is rather elementary model theory, and one part is uh, the, the... I will introduce some model theoretic concepts, which I am surprised to to find well for the moment nobody has as uh, I didn't find them in the literature but I'm not an expert so maybe they they appear somewhere in some form and I'm not aware of that and then what I want I will do I will use this model theoretic concepts to analyze set theory as a first order theory and to gauge its complexity using these uh, this uh, model theoretic concepts and uh, uh, see that they can say something about the continuum problem and also about forcibility. In essence, I will show that uh, forcibility overlaps with consistency in case you deal with uh, pi two sentences for a very large fragment of the theory of H, uh, uh, well, actually for the theory of HLF2. And you can even uh, plug in many uh, classes, uh, classes, the class subset of HLF2 as, as additional uh, predicates or parameters that you can consider in your, in your um, statements of Pi2. So that they are not, the Pi2 sentence may not just quantify over H omega 2, they may quantify over H omega 2 and the universal liberal sets, for example, and even a bit more. And then this is this part. So I will show that using this notion of absolute model continuum, one can show that pi two sentence for h omega two are, in some sense, uh, forcible if and only if they are consistent. Okay, not really consistent because it's clear that, for example, cons yet or not cons yet are, are coming out of this of this equivalence because. You, you cannot force not cons yet while it is consistent. But let's say, apart from the natural counterexample given by Gödel's incompleteness theorem and some more, the rest of the pi two sentences are forcible if and only if they are consistent. And using this stuff, I can give a very neat characterization of which pi two sentences are forcible if and only if they are consistent. And then I will. I will use another idea, which is which I cannot say right away in a few words, to show that the solution of the continuum problem given by force in axiom is in some sense canonical. And the sense in which is canonical, I will I will present in this in this first seminar, and then maybe in the second seminar I will say how these these model theoretic concepts can be applied to set theory. Okay, so the starting point is the notion of existentially closed model and model completeness. So, definition, let tau be a signature and t. If, if it's not readable, let me know, eh? because I, I, I don't have a clear sight of the board. Tau theory, a tau structure M is a TEC if, sorry, if two conditions are met. First condition, there exists some N which is a superstructure of M such that N models T. So you can you can enlarge M and find something bigger that is a model of T. And the second condition, which is the key one, is that uh, um, for all N is above, 
if m models t, m is sigma one elementary n. So what happens is uh, you take a superstructure of m, which is a model of t, you take a formula, a quantifier free formula with parameters in m. If you can find the witness in n, you can find the witness in m. So you can reflect. And the standard example is, for example, fields in signature plus times zero, one. This is uh, T. And an algebraically closed field, M is T, is C. And actually, it's a characterization of the algebraically closed fields. The algebraically closed fields are exactly the existentially closed structure for the theory of fields. Why? Well, essentially, what is a quantifier free formula for the theory of fields? It's saying that certain polynomials have a solution and certain polynomials do not have a solution. So the basic, the atomic formula are stating that a certain polynomial equation uh, is, uh, has to be realized. This is the atomic formula in the signature. And you can either make it true or make it false. So if you if you can if you're able to find a, a point which is a, a solution of certain polynomial equation and is not a solution of other polynomial equation in a bigger field than an algebraic closed field, you can reflect the solution there. Okay, so this is the standard example. And now the idea is that uh, we can replace here t with zfc, and we end up having in the place of M, so the, the ZFC existentially closed model will be, in essence, uh, models of the theory of H kappa for kappa irregular and countable cardinal. But uh, this is delicate because it very much depends on the signature. So we will see that if we just consider the epsilon signature, this is plainly false. But if we consider other types of signature, this becomes true. And actually, you have to enlarge a bit the signature and consider the natural signature of the theory, which is the one that declares the delta zero formula to be atomic. And if you accept that the delta zero formula define atomic predicates, then in essence, this becomes true. The existentially closed models for ZFC in this in the in signatures that that includes the delta zero formula as atomic predicates will make. Uh, the existentially closed model look like an H lambda for some regular and countable lambda. Is it clear so far? Are there questions? If not, I go on. Okay. Well, the first non trivial observation is the following. And maybe I, I will prove it since I have more time than another occasion when I was giving such a seminar. Non trivial fact M is T existentially closed if and only if M is T for all existentially closed. Well, here I'm, I'm, as I'm taking the pi one consequences of T. So all pi one sentences in the, in the signature that are uh, provable from T. Okay. And uh, well, let me prove this fact. Uh, the key point is the following uh, lemma. The following are equivalent for T S tau theories. T for all includes S for all. And second is every model of T embeds into a model of S.
Okay? And then if, if this equivalence is proved, well, you get that if T for all is the same as S for all, then every model of T embeds into a model of S and every model of S embeds into a model of T. So you start from a, an M, which is T existentially closed. You take a superstructure, which is a model of T for all. The sigma one formula true in this superstructure is going to be true in a bigger superstructure, which is a model of T. And then you apply the, uh, the property that time is T existentially close to reflect the, the, the formula from the bigger superstructure to M. So this, the setup is the following. You have M, then you have another superstructure N, which models T for all, but maybe it's not a model of T. And then you go to another superstructure uh, P, which models T. And you can do this because of this lemma. Because T for all and T clearly share the same phi one sentences. Okay? And now you have that your formula exists X P X A is true in this structure with A that belongs here. So since this is a superstructure, this formula is also true in this superstructure. And now this is a superstructure of M, which models T. M is T existentially closed. So you reflect the formula back to M. OK? So if we prove this lemma, this non-trivial fact is established. And so can I go on? Is, is it clear so far? So let me prove the lemma. Proof. Assume M is uh, models uh, T, but no N, which is a superstructure of M, and is such that N models S, then um, what happens is that you can uh, hook up this theory, uh, sorry, S union uh, okay. So I want to reach a contradiction. So union uh, not uh, phi. T, uh, sorry, M models uh, phi, uh, not phi, N, M models phi, N, M models not phi, N, phi universal. Okay, so what happens uh, actually? You can take this. Uh, so what happened is uh, that since uh, um, this n uh, is not a model of S, so there is a sentence uh, phi n, sorry, which is uh, which. Okay, phi n belongs to S for all. Okay, so there is a universal sentence in S for all such that then models the negation. Okay, and now you argue by compactness that this theory S union uh, not phi n, sorry, T union not phi n, and models. Uh, Structure of T is uh, uh, union uh, the delta zero of M. Oof, wait a moment because I'm getting uh, so. Let me go here. I have the proof written. It's better that I go take it. Okay. 
Okay, so sorry. So this is not the theory that you consider. So I take S union delta zero of M. Sorry. This is the theory I have to consider. This is not consistent. Okay, so this theory cannot be consistent because otherwise, if I can find a model of this theory, I would have a model which contains M as a, as a sub uh, as a sub uh, structure. Delta zero of M is the quantifier free diagram of the theory of M with parameters. So if this theory of, is consistent, a model of this theory will contain a copy of M inside. Okay, so uh, by compactness. There exists uh, P A belonging to delta zero of M such that S plus P A is inconsistent. So what is this? This is a, a quantifier free formula and those are elements of M, a tuple of element of M. Well, but this tuple is, is given by elements which are outside of the language. So this means essentially that S proves not phi A. And since those are now constants which are outside of the language, we get that S proves for all X not phi X. Okay? Which means since S is a subset of T, so our assumption is that S for all is a subset of T for all, which means that M models for all X, not phi X. And then this is a contradiction because uh, it also models phi A. Okay, so is this clear so far? The last line wasn't really visible. If you if you could move ah, the yes. paper up a little bit, no, thank you. Is it visible now? Um, yes, thank you. Okay, so this shows that in essence that the universal fragment is capturing what uh, the um, the substructure relation essentially. When you are when you are interested in um, in reflecting sigma one properties, well, you have to reflect with respect to superstructure which preserve this universal structure. Okay, and to, for what I understand, it's uh, it is Robinson who has uh, realized the, the the crucial importance of of paying attention to the universal fragment and not paying attention to the notion of existentially closed models, and he came up with the definition of model completeness, which is a definition T is model complete. Well, actually, uh, I can define both concepts that I'm interested in right away. So model complete if M models T, if and only if M is T for all EC. So this is the first definition. And second definition, which is that the other one that I'm really interested in, T is the model companion of S if uh, M such that M is S existentially closed is equal to M such that M models T. So the existentially closed models are exactly axiomatized by the models of T. And the standard example, algebraically closed fields is model complete. And uh, also algebraically closed field is the model companion of, uh, well, many theories, fields or rings which are not fields.
or uh, well rings which are uh, not fields but have no zero divisors. Okay, the key point is that you just have to have the same universal theory and uh, of a model complete theory and then that model complete theory is your model companion. Okay. And with this definition, well, I can give right away the definition I'm interested in and uh, I'm, I'm stressing the importance of uh, existentially closed models, but maybe it's less transparent what happens. So uh, another definition of model completeness is the following. Um, the, well, the equivalence is not at all trivial, so I'm not going to prove it. It's model complete, if and only if, uh, for all n substructure of n such that m and n are both models of T, we have that m is elementary substructure. So the substructure relation overlaps with the elementary substructure relation for an, for a, and also keep in mind the idea of fields, algebraically closed fields. Well, if you take two algebraically closed fields and one is a substructure of the other, then it's an elementary substructure of the other. Basic fact, which this definition makes transparent, when you have quantifier elimination, you are model complete. But you can be model complete also if you don't have quantifier elimination. Okay, and uh, so the key point, which the previous definition makes clear, is that uh, uh, model completeness and model companionship result amounts to prove that this is an elementary class. So the class of existentially closed models for a certain theory for a certain universal theory has to be uh, elementary. If you are able to prove this result, then you have a, a, a very nice uh, picture of the, of the models of the universal theory. Okay. Okay. And now there is a, uh, well, let me give a counter example to model completeness. So not every theory is model complete. So fact, if T admits quantifier elimination, it, T is model complete in view of this characterization above that you can read, uh, fact, the theory of groups. So this is a universal theory. No, actually there is a pi to axioms, but you can, if you want to get rid of the pi to axiom, either you add the, the operation of inverse or, or you add the, or you just stick to the semi-groups theory. Uh, for the time uh, has, no model companion. A G, the okay. Uh, let's call the T uh, M such that M is T for all E C is not an elementary class. Okay. Is it clear so far? And then let's move on. The, um, the key point, I, I want to outline three facts, some of which are trivial and some are not. If M is TEC and M substructure of N which model, sorry, substructure of N, which models T, actually it is enough T for all plus C with C 
pi 2, well, then the C is reflecting to M, pi 2, even with parameters in M. Okay, why? Well, take, uh, take some A in M. Then, since this uh, pi 2 sentence is true in N, the, so suppose that C is uh, for all X exists Y, C, uh, sorry, C, X, Y, A. So take B belonging to M, then N models uh, exist uh, uh, Y, phi X, uh, sorry, phi B, Y, A. And then this is a sigma one sentence with parameters in M, so you get the witness in M. Okay, and you can do this for every B in M, so you reflect the pi two sentence to be true in M. So you see, pi two, uh, existentially closed structure reflect all pi two sentence, which holds in some superstructure of M. Okay. Now, second fact is that uh, actually, if uh, M is complete. you get that, uh, sorry, T is complete, you get that uh, uh, M models uh, C for all pi to sentence C such that C plus T for all is consistent. So essentially, this is how forcing axiom works. So what you do, you have a pi two sentence, you force over the starting model, you make the pi two sentence true. Uh, well, you have a, actually a sigma one sentence with parameters in the starting model. You make the, you find the witness in a forcing extension. Then you consider another sigma one sentence and you find the witness in a part of forcing extension. And then you continue your iteration and you patch together uh, your forcing using the iteration theorem. And in the end, you have sealed off all the possible uh, sentences, all the possible witnesses, and you have made true all the pi two sentences. And this is exactly what is happening with existentially closed models when you start with a complete theory. So you start from a complete theory and just consider the universal fragment and you consider the pi two sentence which are consistent with the universal fragment and along the way you make them true one after the other and when you continue you make true them all but you have still maintained the truth of t for all and so you reflect those back to m altogether. Okay, so in some sense you see m is maximizing, well in some sense, m maximizes the family of pi two senses, which are consistent with the universal fragment of the theory. So it's a process which is very much reminiscent of how we prove the consistency of bounded forcing axis. Okay, and this is why I got interested in this notion. Okay, and now I come to the uh, situation I want to avoid and uh, the one actually so the problem is the following that if t is complete uh, fact well actually it's a bit of the proof is has some content but not so much uh, if t is complete or let's say if s is complete and uh, T is the model companion of S. Sorry, Matteo, when you say S is complete, do you mean uh, complete as a theory or do you mean model complete? As a theory, as a theory. Okay, okay, okay. 
Sorry. Uh, as for all plugs, C is consistent. T. Uh, T. Uh, T equals uh, logical consequence. Uh, sorry. T is axiomatized. Uh, sorry. T, uh, C belongs to T. And uh, so, pi to sentence so are consistent with the universal fragment of S, if and only if they are in T. And furthermore, model complete theories. are axiomatized by the pi to fragment. So what is this uh, fact is saying is that if you want to axiomatize the uh, existentially closed models, you have to uh, you have to make true as many pi to sentences as possible while maintaining the universal theory. Okay? But there is a caveat, this fact is crucially using the test is complete. Counterexample. What is B saying? I'm sorry. B saying is that uh, C is, the, is in the model companion. So C is consistent with the universal fragment of S, if and only if C is in the model companion. Could you uh, push the paper a little higher? Yes. Thank you. So I don't spend much time on this, but we are, this fact holds true if S is complete. If S is not complete, there is a counterexample. Well, the counterexample is fields, algebraically closed fields. You see, this is a pi to sentence which holds true in any algebraically closed fields, but it fails in Q. In, in, um, and this is uh, uh, so what happens is that the negation of C is consistent with the universal fragment, but the negation of C is not true in the algebraically closed fields. So it's making the equivalence of A and B fail for non complete theories. Okay, because fields have as model companion algebraically closed fields. And this is a pi to sentence. Well, the, actually, the negation of this is a pi to sentence, which is consistent with the universal fragment of fields because it's true in the rationals, but it's not in the model companion. Okay. Sorry. So I have to put here a note. So this brings uh, to isolate the uh, strengthening of model companionship, which is the following notation. Sorry, let me number six. Notation T for all well exist is equal to the uh, C Boolean combination of pi one sentences such that T models C. So for example, exist X, X squared plus one equals zero belongs to, to uh, fields for all well exists minus uh, fields for all. Okay, so I'm taking more stuff inside this in, in principle. But if the theory is complete, it's clear that this is equal to the other. To T for all is equal to T for all well exist if uh, T is complete. Okay, but it, there are many other uh, cases. Matteo, sorry, in the, in the definition up there, you're talking about uh, pi one sentences, but this yes. exists is a sigma one sentence. Did you? 
Did you so mean the negation? Good and combination. I see. You can negate. Okay. So sorry. I can take negation, conjunctions, disjunctions. I see. Okay. But I cannot quantify. So that's the okay. right. Okay. So this is a richer theory. So I'm I'm grabbing more information on T using this this fragment in general than I'm taking uh, just taking the universal fragment. And, but it's clear that if T is complete, this is equal to the universal fragment, because, I mean, the, the information given by the universal fragment is, is the same as this one, but if T is not complete, then this, this can be strictly more. And now I have a, a lemma, which is cooked up in order to rule out the counter example given by the uh, algebraic equals bit. Let T S be tau theories. The following are equivalent. One, T for all well exist contains S for all well exist. Two, every M which models T is substructure of S which models, uh, sorry, of N which models S such that uh, M and N have, uh, set, uh, have the same by one fragment. So they satisfy exactly the same uh, universal formula or Boolean, Boolean, exactly the same Boolean combination of universal formula. Okay. So this, this bigger fragment is giving me more information. It's, it's putting a, a bigger uh, constraint. So I'm not only able to build a superstructure of M when, when this inclusion holds, I am able to build the superstructure of M, which satisfy exactly the same pi one theory that M does. Okay. And so using this lemma, now I have a stronger notion of model companionship to bring forward, which is the following definition. T is the absolute model companion of S if, so first request is that T for all well exist is equal to S for all well exist. So equivalently, this, this is saying us what, what it amounts to say. It means every model of T is a substructure of a model of S which satisfy exactly the same universal sentences and conversely, and second condition, T is model complete. Okay. Counter example. ACF is the model companion. of fields, but not the AMC of fields. Okay, why? Well, take the rationals. This is a field and well, you want to take a model of ACF. So for example, the complex or whatever model of ACF is going to satisfy exist x, x squared plus one equals zero. But this formula, this sentence is false in the rationals. So you cannot find the superstructure of the rational, which is uh, an algebraically closed fields and satisfy exactly the same universal sentences, the rational book, okay? So I'm getting really a stronger notion of model companionship, this absolute model companionship. And why I'm interested in this notion? Because for this notion, I can, I can say that the axiomatization is given by the consistent by two sentences. 
And this is the theorem, which is not hard to prove once the definitions are given. T is the, let me abbreviate, absolute model companionship of S, if and only if, for any pi to sentence, the following are equivalent. One, uh, pi to sentence C, the following C belongs to T, who for any R containing S, uh, complete or consistent, well, actually, it's not consistent. R for all well exist plus C is consistent. So you see now I have axiomatization of the mo of the absolute model companion given by the notion of consistency. So if I'm able to make the pi to sentence consistent with with uh, S. Well, in a strong sense, so it means whenever I take a model of S, I can find another model of the universal theory of this model, which also satisfy my pi to sentence. If I can do this, then this sentence C has to be uh, put as an axiom of the model companion. Okay, so this is making the model companion maximize the family of pi to sentence, which are let's say strongly consistent with with this they they are consistent with the universal fragment of any model of s okay is this clear so far no no questions do, do i lose you do you want me to come back to some concepts because essentially this is the key definition of all this seminar. So if, if the definition is not clear, it's better that I spend a bit more of time to clarify it. So is there, do you have an example, I mean, a simple example of, uh, of such a thing, like a, a theory that has an absolute model companion? Well, I will, I will, have, I will have plenty of examples using set theory. Okay, but outside of so uh, outside of set theory or huh? are there examples outside of set theory also or uh, at the moment uh, let's say let's say let's think so if one is a, a model complete uh, theory which is also complete then the notion of absolute model companionship and model companionship overlap. So uh, I guess that there are uh, many examples in the literature of such theories, and this gives standard example of uh, absolute model companion of model companionable theories. But other other than this consideration, I don't have outside of set theory uh, other examples of. of uh, can Can you repeat what you said was something that you thought there were going to be lots of examples in the literature? Uh, model com. Complete and complete. Well, yes, there are plenty of such theories, but yes, if many of them, as you've just shown, are not absolute. They are, then the, they are also uh, absolutely, uh, I mean, if S is complete and T is the model companion of S, then T is the absolute model companion of S. Why? Well, because two becomes trivial. I mean, uh, well, there, is, yeah. there is just one theory which contains S and is consistent, which is S itself. Sure. <laughs> it, it, it isn't quite clear. Mm -hmm. how, I mean, T extends S, right? So if S is complete, doesn't this just happen when t equals no, s t extends s for all it doesn't extend s. No, no no i mean in your definition here you say if s is complete and t, t is the model companion yes so how does that happen without t being s uh, because for example for example take the the theory uh, of uh, 
take a theory of uh, of an extension of the algebraic of a, of an algebraically closed field which is not a field for example <laughs> ju just to understand how this can happen so take this structure so take okay. the theory of this structure right. this is not a this theory uh, is not a field but uh, it's yeah. it's complete because it's the theory of this model and its right. absolute model companion is the theory of fields of characteristic zero. I think you could also use uh, dense linear orders with endpoints. The model companion should be dense linear orders without endpoints. Uh, uh, the endpoints. Right. Yes, right. without end point. Right. Yes, you're right. So this is this is another example of a, of a complete theory whose model companion is a, is its absolute model companion. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, and now we come to the second aspect I want to bring forward is the dependence of a theory from the signature. So the point is that um, so now let's take a look at uh, at uh, model theory with uh, with um, with the class of structures in mind. So consider uh, the category. Of uh, commutative rings, or even commutative semi rings, if if we just want a universal theory, semi rings with not zero divisors. In signature plus times zero one. Okay, well, in this in this class, uh, well, clearly it is an elementary class, but suppose that I don't put this stuff. Okay, if I just consider this signature, uh, sorry, plus zero, then this signature is too weak to isolate this class of objects as a as a first order theory as a as the an elementary class. Okay. So I have to enrich the signature in order to capture that this is an elementary class. But then I have to be careful because maybe I'm interested in many morphisms, which if I make the signature to reach, I'm going to lose. For example, um, well, and now uh, algebraically closed fields sits inside this class. as the existentially closed models. Okay. Now consider this formula, phi x, y, which says that x times y equals one, or for all z, x times z is different from one and y equals zero. So it says, take the inverse of x if it exists and let y be this inverse, otherwise set y to be zero, okay? And now expand the signature and pass to plus times zero, one, and uh, let me add this uh, symbol hp. This is a unary relation, uh, unary function symbol. And what does hp uh, x equals y if and only if uh, phi x y? So you have this axiom explaining the meaning of the interpretation of this new relation symbol. And now you have that Z embeds into Q as a tau as a, a plus times zero one structure. 
but not as a plus times zero one HC structure. Why? Well, because Z does not have the inverse. So in many occasions, uh, for all its elements, so in, ma in many occasions, this Y gets zero in Z, value zero in Z, while in Q it gets value the inverse of the number. Okay? So you see, when you enrich the signature, you may enrich it too much, and you are going to drop out a lot of, a lot of embeddings that you are interested in potentially. So for example, the, the, the algebraists wouldn't like very much this signature because uh, if they are studying the theory of rings, well, with this signature, they are going to kill a lot of embeddings which they consider natural morphism. Okay, so what happens is that the same theory, well, you have, a, you have an axiomatization in a certain signature, well, you expand the signature, the class of objects, so the models remains the same, but you kill the morphism. The more, the more you add this type of, uh, of uh, axioms to your theory, the more it's difficult to be a morphism. Essentially because you are declaring that the, the, the substructure relation must preserve certain formula and not just the atomic formula, as it is the case for a morphism, but more complicated forms. But you also change like the meaning of pi one, for example. I mean, things that were yes, yes, that's the point. Yes, right. you're changing also the meaning of pi one. Yeah. Okay, and so now the point is, I have a theory. I want to understand which are the interesting uh, class of more. So I have an elementary class of models of the theory, and now I want to understand what, what are the interesting class of model of morphisms. And I have one criteria, which is uh, I consider the class of morphism such that when the theory is, ax is axiomatized with the uh, with uh, with uh, axioms that that determine this class of morphism as the right one, then I get the model companion. So this is my objective, and to do this, I, I use these definitions. So I have a signature tau. I introduce two types of axiom. First axiom is I have a formula, and I introduce an atomic relation symbol that makes this formula equivalent to an atomic formula. Okay. And second type of axiom, I have a formula and I introduce a scholem function for, for this formula. What I do? Well, if for a given tuple, I have just a witness for the formula in this given tuple, then the function on this tuple is going to give me the witness. But if I don't have just a witness, so maybe I have known or maybe I have more than one, then I just set out the, the, the value of the for, of the function on the tuple to be some trivial value. So this is exactly what I did before with uh, with the inverse map. So when there is an inverse, you uh, the function evaluates the the element with the inverse. When there is no inverse, the function maps to zero. Okay. So this is, I think, this is transforming uh, formulae into atomic formulae, and this is adding uh, scholem function in a very ordered, orderly way, orderly manner. And so I expand my signature tau for any subset of the formula times two. I expand it to a signature tau a. So where I, what, what I do, I add this constant, which is the value I use when I want to, to get the trash value. And then I add the function symbol for the, for the formula with second coordinate one, which tuple, which is in A. And I add the relation symbol for the formula with first, second coordinate zero that are in A, so for the tuple such that the second coordinate is zero. And then I add the axiom saying that I force the interpretation of this relate of this function symbol according to this recite, and I force the interpretation of this relation symbol according to this recite. So if I have a tau structure, which is a model of T, I can extend it uniquely to a, a 
tau wave structure, which is a model of T plus all these axioms. There is a caveat, the constant. The constant, in principle, has not a fixed value. It may, it may float inside the structure, but in general, the theories have a constant. So if you are, for example, in the case of rings, there is the zero. So you can set that this C tau is always getting value zero. But you may have started with a language which has no constant, in which case here you have a bit of trouble because this is floating, it's not fixed. Okay, and now I use this to define the, what are the interesting uh, um, signatures in which one can axiomatize a theory. So definition. Uh, given the tau theory T, it's AMC spectrum is given by the A subset of formula of tau times two, such that T plus T tau A which I remember this is uh, um, X I, sorry, X I phi such that phi I belongs to A has an A and C. Okay, so I'm enriching the signature. I'm declaring that many formula becomes atomic and many formula have very canonical scholem uh, function for the for the um, for the witness and uh, when i do this process i'm changing the pi one fragment of the of what what is a pi one consequence of the expanded theory and now since i have changed the pi one fragment it can be the case that in this new uh, situation i can get an absolute model complaint Okay, so maybe in the original signature, it doesn't have a model companion, but they expand the signature and they get an absolute model companion. And then it could be that I expand it more and I lose that there is a, an absolute model companion. And then, okay, so the combination are, are enormous, are many. Okay, so I'm interested to isolate this set, say, for which I can find the absolute model companion. And if I, if I can find an A for which, which fall in the spectrum, it means I have found an interesting signature, because it means that in this signature, I have a, a clear notion of what it means to close off a structure with respect to the existential solution. Okay, so I can axiomatize this, this process by, uh, by first order logic using the notion of model companions. And I'm focusing on the absolute model companions of the spectrum, but the, I mean, you can do the same with the model companions of the spectrum. Okay. Okay, and some elementary observations. One quick point. The, the, if you just, just adding the relation symbols makes the theory uh, a quantifier eliminable. Yes, right. if you have all the relation symbol, you get that's what that was what I was going to write. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, uh, four tau times zero is in the AMC of T. Why? Well, I declare that every formula is equivalent to an atomic formula. So it's not hard to check that now I get quantifier elimination. So the, uh, if I have quantifier elimination, I model complete. In particular, the models becomes by themselves the existentially. So the uh, is in the end. C and uh, so it's this is and T plus T A is its own model companion. So actually, I get model completeness. Actually, absolute model Okay. Uh, 
second uh, observation, there exists, it's not hard to hook up a situation of this sort, such that uh, A, C belongs to AMC of T, B does not belong to AMC of T, or conversely. So it's really getting you a picture very wide. So you can have, I mean, what is the structure of this, uh, of this uh, family of sets for which you have this, uh, you put them in the absolute model companionship spectrum? It's really not clear at all. You can get many, many, I mean, if you have a countable signature, well, you have continued many possible uh, candidates and the structure of the partial order you get, I guess it's, it can be very wide, even if the theory is, uh, is uh, nice. But the point is that uh, anytime you are able to uh, get a model companionship, I mean, to get some of these sets inside the model companionship spectrum, you are gaining uh, uh, good information on the theory. So it's really important information. And to, uh, to, um, to motivate this fact, I use this notion to study set theory. So, and now I use this notion to get some results on set theory and I can uh, list them. I think I have time. How much time am I supposed to have? Um, so you are a little over an hour now. Uh, you can go as long as you want, really. Like uh, uh, usually okay, so I, between I one and one and a half hours or so. 10, 15 minutes this time, and the next time I, I will perfect I will make something. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is my idea? Well, actually, I will be kicked off. Actually, in 10 minutes, I will be kicked off of the department, so you, you won't have to suffer me. So my opinion is that when you, when you put a set of formulae in the spectrum, you, you are getting information on which definable sets are defining important concepts of the theory. Okay, so now uh, right signature for set theory. So let me just take, uh, so this is the standard formula. One uses, one can, one writes down if it tries to formalize the concept that X is the ordered pair with first component Y, second component Z in the epsilon signature. So you see this, this formula, it takes quite a while to, the, to decode. I'm using the, the coding by Kuratowski pair. So I'm using the Kuratowski pair definition and you get this formula. You see it's hardly readable. You cannot read it while this is absolutely clear what you are meaning. So when you are on the board, you write this, you don't write this. And also from the point of view of syntactic complexity, this is already a sigma two sentence. So it's very high in, uh, in uh, complexity and you are, you are uh, shooting a sigma two sentence to define the notion of order pair. So when you want to talk about function, relation, what is a function, what is a relation. So a relation is a set of order pair. A function is a set of order pair with a certain property. You are accumulating quantifiers and you are writing down epsilon formula, which are absolutely unreadable for human beings and are also very complicated from the point of view of Levy hierarchy of formula. So what, what set theorists do? Well, actually they declare that this formula is equivalent to this formula. Or they introduce a function symbol for the order pair, which takes two elements and assigns the uh, order pair of the two elements. So what they're doing, it's exactly the process I described before. So they're adding column functions for a certain set theoretic operation and uh, a relation symbol for certain set theoretic relations. 
And actually, the signature in which we do set theory is the delta zero signature, which is taking delta zero equals phi x, phi, the delta zero formula. And uh, you, we set t delta zero equal x i phi, phi belongs to delta zero, i less than two. And uh, we interpret the constant by empty set with the constant, the, the, the constant which gives the trash value of the function when there is no witness. Well, it's, it's uh, with uh, for all x, uh, x is not in C epsilon. Okay. So now we have a, we have a better signature and actually this is more or less what Kunen does in his book when he introduced the absolute concept. Well, he de decides that delta zero formula defines uh, the absolute concepts and then he shows that many sectority concepts are, are absolute. And essentially what he does is showing that if you do set theory considering these as the right uh, signature and these as the right uh, axioms to be added, so explaining that certain concepts are elementary, then you can develop uh, quite a bit of of uh, set theory of set theory in the right way. Okay. Well, for example, now if we have if we are in this signature, we can say x is Aleph one is becoming a pi one formula. What what is it? It's x is an ordinal, and then it says uh, there exists a function from omega times x into x such that uh, f, uh, sorry, uh, exists f, f goes from omega times x to x and f restriction uh, y times, uh, sorry, f restriction omega times y is a subjection on y for all y in x. Okay, and sorry, I wrote it in the wrong way. So there exists that for all y belonging to x. F goes from omega times x to x, and for all y belonging to x, f restriction to omega times y is a subjection on y. Okay, so you see, this is a um, sigma one, uh, sorry, uh, sigma, no, is a Boolean combination of universal sentences. So this is um, sigma zero, and if you check, this is sigma one. Okay, so being the first uncountable cardinal is now expressed by a pi one property. If you do it in the actual relation, Mateo, being the first uncountable Mateo, sorry. cardinal, I guess it's sigma Mateo, one thousand. Don't you still have to say that there is no surjection on two x? Um, yes, yes. From omega. Yes. So this is the sigma one part, and then you have to say the pi one part is for all y in x. For all y, if y is in x. Uh, Sorry, for all f, if f, if the domain of f is y and y is in x, the range of f is not x. Right. Yes. So it's a uh, uh, so zero, sigma one, and pi one. So it's a Boolean combination of pi one formula. And then ch, ch is sigma two. But what you have to say, there exists f. Uh, dom f equals alec one. So this is a Boolean combination of pi one formula. And for all r, if r is a subset of omega, if and only if r belongs to the image of f. And then you have also to say that f is a function and f, uh, the, uh, uh, f is a function. 
Okay, so this says there is a surjection of Aleph 1 onto the power set of omega. And you see uh, existential quantifier, universal quantifier, and it's a, a sigma 2 sentence. So not CH is pi 2. Okay, and then it means that putting not CH in the model companion of set theory is easy. You just have to prove it consistent. So, well, it was not easy to prove it consistent, but once that was done, okay. And actually you can play around and one can check that two to the LF zero is bigger than LF two is a Boolean combination of Sigma two and Pi two and uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so let me list the theorems and next time I have, I will, I will, uh, So theorem one, assume T contains a ZFC. One, for all uh, K, T, uh, sorry, for all uh, lambda, T definable cardinal. Well, I don't, I don't, I haven't said what that, that means, but you can guess. So it means that there is a formula such that uh, stating that X is a cardinal, such that lambda satisfy this formula, and the lambda is the unique witness of some formula. T definable cardinal, there exists A lambda contained in delta zero times two, such that A lambda belongs to the spectrum. <laughs> to the spectrum and uh, the model companion, sorry, let me call it AMC of uh, T plus TA lambda uh, is the theory of H lambda plus, okay? Well, the theory of H lambda plus common to the uh, common to all models of T. So I don't detail. The second is uh, if uh, B belongs to AMC of ZFC, well, or of T, because I'm assuming T extends ZFC, and B uh, contains delta zero times two, so I can talk about the atomic concept, then, um, AMC of T plus TB satisfies ZFC uh, minus power set. Okay, for all uh, with replacement for all the formula. So it's a and if one is familiar a bit with set theory, this is the standard theory of the H lambdas for lambda regular. So they are models of uh, all axiom of ZFC except the power set axiom. And here I'm saying, if I'm able to show that in a certain signature extending the delta zero formula, I have the absolute model companion. Well, this absolute model companion is a model of all axiom of ZFC except power set. Okay. And unfortunately, I have to stop here because they are kicking me out of the department or fortunately, it depends. So I, I will continue with the other results next week. I mean, the more interesting ones, I, I have to state them yet, but I don't have the time now. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great talk. Thank you very much, Matteo. Really excellent talk. I, I followed everything until the end. I'm so happy. <laughs> um, do you still have time to take uh, any questions, Matteo, or do you yes, have to leave? It's, uh, it's, if it's not, I mean, I, in 10 minutes, I have to get out of the department. Okay. okay. So, so then are there any more questions for Matteo today? But I'm, I'm glad to continue the discussion next week. And okay. I am glad also to ask more questions now, but unfortunately I can take them. Uh, and if I'm not able to answer, I will continue next week. Okay.
Well, it seems like there there are no pressing questions right now. Okay, so so then let's maybe just wrap it up. Thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you again next Friday. Okay, thank you so much for this opportunity, and see you next week. Okay, all right. Bye. Bye, everyone.